if you want to go be safe in flying, the best way is to be flying with your A-game. Really going for things, bringing out the best piloting qualities that you can. Oh. That's the gate to flying. Oh, at last, guys. We've been set free. It's been such a long time. Back to the hill. Ah, oh, man, what a feeling. It's so good to have the restrictions ease just a little. This is unlimited outdoor exercise. Thanks, Boris. So what, sh what should you do if you haven't been flying for a long time? Well, you can check out my video on refreshing your skills. That's a starting point. But now that I'm coming back to the hill and I'm actually gonna fly, some people might be thinking you should try and fly so you avoid an accident. You know, be careful, be cautious, and avoid at all costs having any kind of accident. And that's likely to just make you fly in a very nervous way that you're looking out for everything, you're looking out for dangers and you're avoiding other pilots and the whole time you're gonna be tense and I think it's not a good mindset for being safe. So what I'm doing today is I'm going for the UK record. 25K triangle speed. I've gotta do more than 20Ks an hour. Let's give it a shot. My thinking is this will help me bring on my A game. So, I'll catch you in the sky. Oh, it's so good to be able to say that. See you up there. Yeah, baby. Right now, I'm just, uh, it's early in the day. I've got my first climb and I've just got a feeling for the day. Lap trade's good. I haven't got up anywhere near cloud base, so I need to hang around a bit more, wait for a bit more juice in the day, so that I'm not gonna go down. So for the moment, just playing on this little ridge. So wonderful to have this space again. You know, I've never ever experienced anything like that, that lockdown, that loss of freedom. I would have never imagined a scenario where I couldn't fly my paraglider. But there we go, that's COVID. So I am so grateful for everybody. I'm blown away by how responsible everybody's been. You know, the, the government, we might not agree with who our leaders are and what they say, but pretty much everybody, they've said, stay at home. Everybody stayed at home. We've uh, managed to reduce the spike in this virus. And due to that, I've got this freedom now to act responsibly and be out here, <laughs> social distancing from everybody. But thank you. Thank you for your responsibility. Thanks for working together. And as always, thank you, NHS. We love you guys. Happy place. Happy life. Okay, I'm on glide to the start and 
there's more sink on the glides. Um, like four down, glide of like two and a half to one on the way out. So there's huge holes in the sky. transition like this is often a good place to find thermals and to have them trigger. We've got a good field baking in the sun on the left and uh, then there's a train line which will heat up pretty well with the metal and the tracks and the stone and then there's a green field so you're gonna have cooler air there so all of this warm air will come along and most likely trigger off this line. That's what I'm getting here. The air is a bit funky, it's a bit difficult to turn, like I've got quite a bit of break on, on the inside of the corner, but when I hit the spike of lift, it's really trying to straighten me out and uh, preventing me from turning. So I'm taking it very easily around the corner so I don't spin the wing. Not too worried about the train line itself, I'm over it, I can glide into the green field or the brown field, but I'm getting a bit low. I feel like I've lost it here, so this is just a final turn into landing. Legs down. Ready to touch down. Lordy. He left. Ah. Eat the dirt. Oh, it's Dusty still trying to pull my glider, so I'm wrapping the brakes now. Just wrapping and wrapping and wrapping. Stop any chance of it lifting up. Then I've got to get to the wing. So I grab the lines. Good job on wearing gloves. Get to the ring for the stable edge. And pin it down. You want both tips down. Next to sailing. <laughs> and that, ladies and gentlemen, is why you need to practice your PLF. <laughs> right. Dust devil. Big brown field, summer, there was no wind on landing, and that little thing got me. It can happen any time in your flying. Boom, PLF, good to practice. That was a hell of a hard landing. I kept the glider flying as much as I could, but it was getting tamed by that dusty, and uh, secret is to just do that roll so that you can stay, um, you can absorb some of the impact. Cool, time to pack. Grrr. <laughs> so let's uh, give myself a full debrief at the end of the day after having an incident. You want to sit down and really analyze what happened, go through lessons that you can learn, and make sure that you, you aren't just sort of brushing it off and carrying on and not making changes. Let's just frame it properly. So, no flying during the whole lockdown, first day back into the air. It's uh, mid-May, which makes it sort of late spring going into summer. Uh, it's a sunny day and uh, good thermic, good lapse rate, cloud base at sort of five and a half thousand, six thousand foot, so 2,000 meters, and uh, light winds, flying a Omega X-Alps 3, so END 2 liner, and uh, I'm Greg. So I've got a couple of thousand hours of flying and uh, 28 years of experience. Um, put that all together into the mix and Landing in a dust devil, 
Collider collapsed, came down hard, had to do a parachute landing fall, worked like a bomb, rolled over, got a bit dragged, killed the glider. So let's look at the decision making that put me into that place. Why was I in a position where I was flying through a dust devil on landing? Uh, you could just brush it off and say, hey, well, you know, dust devil is completely random. How can you control that? But if we look at it a little bit more, there's probably things I could have done. If we look at the landing setup, coming into land, there was a clear green sports field, which was my primary landing field, and that's what I'd lined up for, and I saw it there, and that would have given me a nice safe landing. I was over the brown field because I was hoping to get a low save. So I'd gone there because of a performance goal. I wanted to get up and do this 25k triangle. That was my goal that I'd set for the day and I'd set it up that I was going to keep trying and I don't want to just give up on my goal. It's the whole point of having a goal is like, you know, you, you fight for it. If you want it, you've got to fight for it. So I've set that performance goal up of doing a 25 kilometer triangle. And now I'm coming into land and I can see there's an alternative to the landing field that I've got where there's a possibility of getting some lift. So obviously I've gone there because I expect it to be more thermic where I'm going to divert to over the brown field. For sure, it's got much more better chance of generating a thermal. So I'm going there because I think there will be thermals there. Normally on a normal day, so that wouldn't be a problem. I've had many low saves and I've maybe got away with it. So if I look back, there were two times before that that I noticed dust devils. When I was getting low over the farms, I was on the hill and I looked out, could see a pilot climbing and I looked into the farm complex and I could see a dust devil pulling through and I thought, whew, wow, the day's on, you know, great, fantastic. There's like good strong lift down at the bottom and I can go out and I can get up. I saw another dust devil going through the grass so I could see the grass being twisted up. So I'd already had signals that there were dust devils at ground level. Now I'm going for a landing field where I expect it to be strongly thermic and I haven't factored in that, yes, there would be a chance of dust devils. So this is maybe not such a wise plan to go for a brown field when there are dust devils around. And that's really where I think my decision making went wrong, is that I chose to go somewhere to get up without tempering that with the risk of dust devils. That was evident. It was the middle of the day. It's late spring, and there were dust devils that I'd already seen. So there was a chance of there being a dust devil over that field. I also didn't account for how risky dust devils can be on landing. Um, I've always been able to manage my glider well, and fly well around in thermic conditions, and I'm not too worried about it. So complacency. 28 years of flying. Complacency has crept in with my landing choice in thermic conditions. But I've always had this mindset that I don't give up until both feet are on the ground. So maybe that needs a bit of a review. When conditions are strong, when the sun is baking and you've got a very good lapse rate, it might be a good decision in future to look for landing fields that are likely to be less thermic rather than going somewhere where I can get up again. You can't get rid of all the risks in flying, for sure. There's still gonna be some risks that I'm exposed to, but if I'm gonna be smart about this flying and keep my flying safe for many years to come, I need to adjust and learn from incidents as they happen and try and pick a landing where you've got smooth airflow and dampened thermal development. Hey, so I hope you've learned something from analyzing me. You can do the same with your own flying. When you have an incident, it's always best for you to go through the, the incident yourself. 
slowly, methodically, just try and rule out the risks, rule out the causes, and you'll, you'll come down to what actually happened and what the primary cause was and what you can change to improve it and make your flying safe thereafter. Learn more about the control inputs and things to practice in the extended edition. If you want to dive deeper into paragliding knowledge and develop your skills further, pop over to flywithgreg.com. Thanks for watching. As always, stay safe, and I'll see you in the next one.